Chapter six, six reasons why men must give up pornography. Before I dive in, I want to be clear. I am not anti-pornography. However, what I have seen over and over and over over the decade that I've been working as a relationship coach and also as a man myself who has struggled with a pornography addiction, I have seen that pornography negatively affects intimate relationships, long-term, short-term, brand new intimate relationships in ways that we often aren't even aware of. And a lot of couples where pornography is present, they're either just not talking about it and not making the connection to their disconnection experience, to them not feeling connected with each other, to them experience maybe sexual dysfunction or disconnection. They're either not making the connection and not talking about it, or they're talking about it, but not doing so in healthy, helpful, productive, constructive ways. So I wrote this chapter, Six Reasons Why Men Must Give Up Pornography, in my book, Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. It's available on Audible and Amazon and all the places where you get books. I'll be reading all of the chapters on this YouTube channel. So uh, please subscribe, follow along with me, come along with me on the journey. And again, I am not anti-porn. I am not uh, promoting shaming of sexuality or masturbation. I'm not promoting banning porn. Pornography can even be useful for some couples to create connection. It can actually be a tool for intimacy. But for the overwhelming majority of men, we aren't at that place and we can't get to that place until we first get it out of our lives. And then, maybe then, we can come back to it in a healthy way. All right, let's dive in. In my boyhood teenage days of yore, using pornography required patience and imagination. One of my early adventures with porn occurred on weekday afternoons when I got home from middle school. Before anyone else arrived, I would sneak into my parents' bedroom closet with a small footstool. Now, I have no idea how I first found it, but resting atop the center ceiling panel, just inches from my horny little brain, was my stepfather's erotic treasure trove of Betamax videotapes with titles like The Oriental Babysitter and Taxi Girls. Boy, these are back in the day. I'd pop one into the black Betamax box, hit play, and kick back on the lounger as sounds and images of ecstasy flooded my lusty synapses while I enjoyed myself a dozen or so times. Oh, to be a teenager again. A few years later, during high school, my tastes grew more sophisticated when mom started getting Victoria's Secret catalogs in the mail. Although I kind of already knew what the big secret was, these glossy mags made my imagination work harder at unlocking that secret each time. And I delighted in that. But a new catalog once every few weeks was far too infrequent for my insatiable teenage libido. And I could barely wait for the spring issues when live Victorias would return to wearing sexy sundresses and seductive short skirts. Those days of porn patience and teasing my imagination are gone. At this very moment, I and most every other man in Western civilization have in my hands a little device loaded with the entire known universe of pornographic material, ready to stir my lust and blow my loins wide open. I never have to wait till spring again. Enough is Enough, that's an organization, and Covenant Eyes, those are two internet safety organizations, offer these sobering statistics. And uh, just quick note, Covenant Eyes is Catholic-based. I am not. Here are the statistics. Every second... 28,258 internet users are viewing pornography. And by the way, this was, a, this was probably 10 years ago. It's, that number's probably a lot higher now. American children begin viewing pornography at an average age of 11. The pornography industry is a $97 billion industry worldwide. Again, that number may be higher. Men are 543% more likely to look at porn than are women. And more than one in five searches are for pornography on mobile devices. And again, that number may be higher now. Porn is ubiquitous. You might be surprised who uses online porn. I have amazing male friends who are attractive, dynamic, and successful, who've spent countless hours over many years caught in the sticky pornographic web. You would never imagine these men using online porn, but they have and do. I've also used it. As a single man for the last four years, and to be clear, when I wrote this, uh, I hadn't yet met my, my wife, the woman I'm married to. So this, I wrote this uh, a while back. So as a single man for the last four years, great sexual encounters with women have been a rare luxury. My iPhone, on the other hand, is all too willing to dance for me, 
undress for me, tease me, lick me, suck me, screw me, and all around indulge me, whenever I want, whatever I want. I do not generally have an addictive personality, yet I have at times gone weeks using internet pornography every night to quickly arouse and then satiate myself. And there were times when I seemed to need it just to fall asleep. I would watch up to an hour or more in bed before exhausting myself enough to fall asleep, which ironically carved into an already sleep-deprived entrepreneurial lifestyle. And at one point, using porn gave me repetitive stress injury. That, that, that happened. You know, messing up my otherwise formidable basketball game. Like I literally, repetitive stress hurt my arm, masturbating to porn over a period of about a year or two years. And I experienced other disconcerting side effects of porn too, some of which I'll detail below. Now, there's nothing wrong with masturbation. I said this at the beginning. And I also do not believe in sexual shame. But modern pornography can be a serious detriment to everyone, not just to men, but to the women we love too. So here are six reasons, at long last, the six reasons why I believe men must give up consistent use of pornography for personal stimulation. Number one, porn ruins our erections with actual women. After I had been using porn moderately for about a year, I began to notice that I couldn't sustain erections with women as long as I once could. I was horny as ever, but without the constantly changing visual erotic stimulation that watching video after video offered, one woman's body couldn't hold my erotic focus as effectively as it used to. And to my frustrated surprise, real sex had become somewhat understimulating. It's tragic. And since I gave up porn, every morning wood has made its... Oh, excuse me. Since I gave up porn, and I did give up porn uh, before writing this, since I gave up porn... Even morning wood has made its return like an exotic tree rescued from the brink of extinction. Number two, porn tunes our bodies to premature ejaculation. And now for some men, it actually does the opposite. It tunes their bodies to not be able to ejaculate with uh, an actual human partner. I never had a problem with quick climax before I consistently used porn. I could always match, if not outlast, my female sexual partners with or without a condom and always with solid erections. With porn, I could watch a short video and within minutes have myself rocketing towards climax, but I'd stop myself before I went too far because I always wanted to see what different erotic adventure awaited me in the next video just to click away. I would do this for an hour, rapidly rising in mindless bliss with every new short video, stopping myself at the edge each time. Eventually, I'd realize how much time had gone by so I'd choose the best video I'd seen and let it throw me over the edge. I was tuning my body to quickly rise and climax. Now, I can immediately stop moving my own hand when I masturbate. A real woman's aroused body doesn't stop moving so fast. It's like trying to slam the brakes of a speedboat in deep water. I just couldn't often handle her enthusiasm, and I started getting concerned. Thankfully, quitting porn allowed my body's nervous system to retune itself to a less hurried sexual pace and rhythm. And I will say, I don't know if I say this in the chapter, it took me about a year and a half to recover from even, a, you know, not, a, not an overwhelming porn addiction, but just using it an hour a day for a year. It took me a year and a half to recover from that. Number three, it's a cop-out from powerfully interacting with actual women. Most men in our Western culture generally do not know how to interact powerfully with women in the everyday world, certainly not as mature, healthy, masculine men. We routinely fail to proactively step up to women we're attracted to in effective and honorable, respectful ways. So many of us routine, routinely let our silent crushes slip away forever into the dark, painful cave of our regrets. Masturbation can take the edge off all the resulting frustration, so much so that we don't then have to do anything useful about it, like learn how to be more powerful and still respectful in our interactions with actual women. Number four, it's a colossal waste of precious time. Watch porn alone isn't what you came to this planet to do. Get on with your deepest purpose already or with finding out what that is if you don't yet know. Number five, it creates unrealistic expectations of women. Porn just makes men think women should be easier to get into bed. It makes us think we might get laid more if we were more bold or clever or simply more aggressive. And there is truth to it. 
There surely is room for many a bewildered man to be bolder with women, but not at the cost of genuine care for women. Women in porn videos are always willing to let a man, or men, aggressively open them up and do whatever they want. They'll take the money shot right in the face, on their knees beneath a cock in the camera, as if to fully underscore their willingness to be conquered and owned by a man and for all the world to see. In my experience, actual women don't react to calculating male aggression by opening their legs. And even if they do, and sometimes they surely do, that doesn't create an authentic, intimate relationship. It just creates two bodies slapping into each other. Women are lusty sexual creatures, for sure, just like men. But when men are ready to relate to women in deeper ways, ways that include sexuality and also transcend it, porn is an awful study. The wondrous feminine mystique of a woman, the mystique we men so desperately crave to experience, is only made available to the men who learn how to cherish a woman in her fullness. And that doesn't happen anywhere in porn. Finally, number six. When we watch porn, we support human trafficking, slavery, rape, and blackmail of women all over the world. Despite my tame taste in porn and the fact that I never paid for online porn, I still unwittingly saw videos on the average free porn site that disturbed me. I'm horrified that I almost surely watched men manipulate, even outright blackmail, women into otherwise unwanted sex in fake taxi cabs, fake doctor's offices, fake casting sets, and more. The camera rarely showed the man's face, and always the woman's. Now again, to be clear, I'm not anti-porn, I'm also just a little bit left, um, and I'm very well aware that a lot of those role-playing videos are, are, are uh, consenting adults, etc. Uh, but often, the fact that we can't tell the difference, I think, is, is, is problematic. And then there's the whole domain of revenge porn. Men posting pornographic videos of ex-girlfriends that are seen by thousands and thousands of men and, and other women uh, online, worldwide. Again, it's just, it's problematic. All right, back in. Since I started researching this, I've discovered countless examples of criminal cases worldwide where people, mostly men, have been arrested and prosecuted for creating pornography with women they trafficked from other countries. Women who were enslaved in buildings they couldn't leave. Women kept in place by physical violence. Women threatened with exposure to their families and more. I now know that I must have watched videos where women did sex acts they were forced to do. And my taste in porn again were tame. I'm not implying there's absolutely and always a direct link between porn and criminality. Surely a lot of porn is filmed with consenting female adults. I'm simply saying that I couldn't easily avoid watching videos of questionable, disturbing origin, and that this is not an overall good thing for humanity. I'm still tempted to watch porn sometimes. Even as I write this, my iPhone sits quietly beside me, able in a matter of seconds to unleash a marauding army of sexy oriental babysitters straight into my lizard brain. But clearly, nothing ever good comes from that, so to speak. Men, we've got to stop using porn. Or as I said at the beginning, we've got to come into a new relationship with it, again, so to speak. I know it's a quick fix. I know some couples even use it to spice up an otherwise fading sex life. Nothing wrong with that. But I say find other ways. Get creative. Porn is easy, low-hanging fruit beneath our brilliance. It's not just hurting us. It's also hurting our women. Again, the... And that was chapter six of Choose Her Every Day or Leave Her. Six reasons why men must give up porn. Remember to subscribe to this channel for chapter seven, which is six things an evolved man wants from a woman. Coming next. There you go. I'm Brian Reeves. See you in the next video.